So recently we took apart a PlayStation 1, a PlayStation 2, and a PlayStation 3, but I actually skipped over a system going to the PS3. I skipped the PSX. That's right, this is a PS2. It's probably the craziest PS2 I've ever seen. See, Sony wanted to try to make what I would call a do everything box and sell it for over $700 in Japan in 2003. And uh, well, they at least tried, because here it is. Today, I wanted to take a look at the PSX, take it apart, talk a little bit about it, and uh, well, why it probably only lasted just over a year in Japan. Now, I was first turned on to this system originally by MVG a little while ago because he did a video on it and talked a bit about it, and I thought it was kind of a neat thing that Sony did. It just didn't work out too well because of what they tried to do, which was pack everything possible into this system. But there is some historic value in this box. Sony did a lot of firsts here that carried over to the PlayStation 3. For example, this is the first place that they used that cross media bar, which eventually went on to be what was used on the PlayStation 3, and it showed up in Bravia TVs as well. So that was kind of interesting to see it show up technically in what's a PS2. Also, it had Ethernet on the back and would accept firmware updates. And in a press release prior to the release of this system, they also mentioned that it would be the first time that they ha would have a variable fan for changing temperatures as the system was on rather than just one loud fan. Although, system is still quite loud. This was also the first time they had a slot loading disc set up and this would play PS1, PS2, DVDs, as well as record shows that you would watch through a hard drive that was built in and it would also burn DVDs. Yeah, it really did everything. So let's go ahead and check this guy out. So I managed to get this model on eBay and I got it pretty cheap mostly because it doesn't really work. I mean, it kind of works. It turns on, I'm able to navigate the menu, but it struggles badly when it comes to reading any game discs that I pop in. I ordered a couple from Japan, which, oh yeah, by the way, let me show you this. This is uh, a Metal Gear Solid 2 game that I grabbed. And uh, I mean, check this thing out. It is amazing looking, right? It's, I just, I, Japan just gets all the cool looking games. Anyway, let's take a look around the system first before we open it up. The system on the top just says PSX. It has this blue kind of fading, this nice gradient fade to like the gray on the bottom here. PSX of course is what I think Sony would call the original PlayStation when it was first coming out, like marketing and stuff. I think that's what they referred to it internally. But here they just prominently display it on their digital recorder, of course, with Sony here at the bottom as well. And then we also have a few things that actually sit below. There's kind of like this large amount of plastic that these letter this lettering sits below here. That's hard drive access, hard drive recording, and disc recording right here. So yes, as it was recording to the hard drive, if you're watching like a TV show or I guess just ripping DVDs and stuff, you would it would add it to the hard drive and you can watch it from there. Now, the sides, it's all held up with kind of these plastic feet on the side here to kind of give it some ventilation because this system uh, would get hot and overheat according to several reports. So that that is something that uh, we'll take a look at when we get inside. Now on the front here, we have our slot loader here for the disc. You pop it in, it grabs it and pulls that in there. We also have our power, which would go to standby when it's just plugged in, our eject here. And then we have a quit game. And that's important because you can navigate the entirety of the menu through just buttons on the front here. So if you don't wanna plug in your PS2 or even PlayStation 1 controller, you can see we have home, up, down, left, right, enter. You can just jump around the menu by just pressing the buttons on the front here without having to worry about picking up a controller. We also have some memory card slots here if you wanna drop in uh, any of your saved games and play a PS2 or PS1 game, USB port. And then we also have our memory, our memory stick Pro right here, so if you have like a digital camera or something, you can drop that in there and then uh, load images up through here. What was really funny, again, is this is something else that was technically carried over to the PlayStation 3. I, I look at this, and I see a lot that was used for that system in this. Now the backing is kind of strange, and that has to do with this, 
I, I mean, everything is kind of caved inside here. I think it's because it was also designed to stand up. As you can see, this, this of course gives it some space on the bottom with these kind of these rubberized feet here. So I guess they wanted enough room so that all the cables could kind of route around here, but everything is like really far in and it's, it's kind of annoying to get to. In fact, back here, that's where your PS2 and PS1 controllers plug in. It's it's very odd. Now they have like etchings and stuff up here to tell you what all of that is, but it's just, it's so tucked away. I mean, this is of course a PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 built in and it just feels like the controller slots are such an afterthought, which would be a very important thing if you wanna play games. Otherwise we have a ton of ports. There's ethernet. We also have uh, our power all the way over here on the left, uh, some composite in. S video in and then we also have kind of our cable in right here as well if you want to screw in a coax so you can I guess record your TV shows. Now we're gonna go ahead and take this guy apart. I, I have not attempted it at all so this is gonna be kind of like a blind teardown for this so we can see how that goes. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tear it down. I'm gonna leave it apart mostly because if the opportunity ever comes up where I can get another laser for this then I'll probably go back, add the new laser. I'll probably try to find one and make this work because other than it not reading, it technically works otherwise. Like the hard drive is not dead in this system, which is something that gets brought up a lot is that the hard drives go bad eventually in here. And they had a, like a 160 gig model, they had a 250 gig model. And of course the prices would go up from there. So uh, hey, if it ever comes up that I'm able to find a laser on eBay or Amazon or something, I might come back and look into fixing this up completely. So the first thing I did, of course, pop this door off. I already see several what appear to be just like coverings where screws should be under. So I assume once we start popping these up, which thank you early 2000s when uh, Sony was just using what appears to be, yep, just Phillips head screws. Whew. They started using torque screws a little later and that was really annoying. Also, it looks like the sides just kind of slide off there. So we can get those off and just kind of drop them to the side pretty easily. Oh, and this guy's already coming up. So we're, we're making some pretty good progress pretty quickly here. A lot of smaller screws here holding this board down, which I assume is the LED board for all of those lights I was talking about before, like the hard drive access light, for example, uh, and then the disc writing light on the other side. It has one ribbon cable, looks like the plugs in. And then I'm gonna assume we have a board that should hopefully just kind of pop right up. The backing here with all of those inputs has just a mess of screws, which really reminds me a bit of like the Panasonic Q that I, that I ripped apart, where they had this similar thing, but that was stacked. It was very frustrating the way they had that set up, but this is very similar where it has a back plate and it looks like the board and all the inputs, because there are so many, just kind of screw into the back here. All right, with all those screws out, it looks like the top just kind of lifts off of there. Remember, this is the cable that ran to our uh, LED strip on the back. And uh, looks like we have our full top off. It's pretty thick overall. I don't know if that's for heat or they just wanted to add some weight to it. I don't know, but that is not light. Just this part in general here at the top. They also probably wanted to make it feel very, very, uh, I'm gonna say premium. So that might be a reason as well. But it uh, looks like we have all of our parts here I can put in the lid. And wow, okay, so there's a lot to take in immediately just looking at this part here. So the first thing we can tell is uh, we have our big power supply back here that is uncovered. So I wouldn't go touching any of that immediately. Um, but we do also have our hard drive here and our disk drive. And the disk drive is, is kind of neat because it does have two lasers, which is, which is interesting, right? It has a laser, I believe, for reading pretty much everything, games, uh, DVDs, all of that, if you pop it in to play it. And then you have one that should be designed to specifically like burn any of the blank discs that you put in there. Now this also reminds me of a wider PlayStation 3 disc drive as well. So that's something to keep in mind. A lot of this, like I said, ended up carrying over to that PlayStation 3 system, even internally. First thing out is the hard drive. It is a Maxter 250 gigabyte IDE drive. They have this board here that looks like it plugs into the IDE and then it also gives it kind of this right angle essentially. Otherwise, remember, if you put it too close, 
you have this very large cable that comes out and it's very difficult to get a right angle and what they're trying to do with encasing it in this, what should be pretty large, but now that I'm looking inside of it, fairly small casing um, for what they're trying to do here. And it looks like they also ran this cable off of the top to give that uh, hard drive activity light uh, functionality up there as well. Next, after a couple screws, our power supply lifts up. It looks like it presses down right here to make contact and send power to the rest of the board that is all the way uh, underneath of all of this. Uh, it does seem to have uh, first dibs on the fan, by the way, right here. And that probably, again, is just to cool a lot of the components on top. I'm sure it had to pull quite a bit of power to make a lot of this work. And it looks like it is dependent on this one fan, I guess, right here that it's it's not a big fan, so that's probably why this entire system is very loud. Even when it's plugged in and just running in standby, I would notice that the fan would occasionally just kick on and it was pretty loud for not even using the thing. So I went ahead and just unscrewed the top lid for the disk drive here. It's very similar, like I said, to the PlayStation 3 lid, at least in the idea of that you have several different things that will pretty much move in accordance with the disc going in, trigger a sensor, and then you'll have all kinds of gears and other things kind of go into place to lock it in. It does work at least. However, something I saw with the PlayStation 3 a lot was that this would get kind of tricked up and it would have issues, but you can see we have similar sensors on the front right here. That's mostly how it knows if a disc is being popped in. As the disc kind of enters the system, this will open up. You have a little guy here that will eventually kind of uh, pop out of place. And then the, the system knows to start spinning the gears and pulling the disc in. Same idea that they used in the PlayStation 3 being shown right here. But here is something that is really, really interesting. And that is the idea of using two lasers to accomplish this. And that is why this disc drive was so large and so wide and probably why the system is as wide as it is. It's pretty much all down to this disc drive. And I do wonder if they had ended up making a slow slim version of this system. Like let's say it was very successful. Everyone was for some reason spending nearly $800 on this box for their living room. If they would have eventually worked on this concept a bit further so that they can have something that would burn discs, but then also play PS1, PS2, PS3, all of that without needing a disc drive this wide. But yeah, that's why the system is so large. We have this big disc drive and Sony decided to put two lasers side by side. And from what I've been able to gather, this is the important laser right here. And this one will only kick in when uh, certain tasks are needed, which I guess is mostly being able to burn discs or, or read back discs and then have this one kind of kick in for everything else it seems. Yeah, I, I have seen people actually check this out without this lid on so that you can see which laser does all the work and it is this one. So I'm gonna keep an eye out for a replacement laser on this side here so that maybe I can eventually get this guy uh, working. But yes, that I, from what I can tell, the reason this system is so large is because of how big this drive is here. I think they could have done something a bit different with power supply and the hard drive and kind of reorganize them if this was like half the size. Anyway, with all that done, I went ahead and unclipped the bottom so we can, I think, flip it over and start working from the other side, which appears to have the entire motherboard. Again, on the bottom here, uh, it looks like we just have some aluminum, nothing too serious, but now we can flip it over and get a look at the motherboard, which is pretty cool. The disk drive is hanging on by, I think, a ribbon cable on this side here. I wanted to double check it before I started pulling in any cables. You wanna see if you can get to the one that's holding that guy in, there we go. So now the disk drive can go to the side, which by the way, looking at the bottom, something else that was pulled from here and brought over to the PlayStation 3 is the metallic bottom. They use that same thing in the PlayStation 3 as well. And here we are with the motherboard. Looks like we have all kinds of ribbon cables all over the perimeter of this guy that we have to unplug, which I'm sure is running all kinds of stuff, whether it's uh, part of that disk drive that I had to unplug cables on to get out, and possibly even separate boards on the other side that may be controlling uh, different things, whether it's some video out or maybe had something to do with the hard drive. So let's get all of those out of there. And I do see a big screw right here in the middle. All right, it is loose, it's up, and uh, here's our, system here. There's a lot of stuff going on. Of course, our little CMOS battery there. Um, we have what appears to be 
the separate heatsink here. I do know what was really neat about this is that they took the Emotion Engine chip and the graphics synthesizer chip that we looked at in the PlayStation 2 and they turned them into one chip for this system. Now there's also a bunch of other chips as well on here that'll control all of the other multimedia functions. But when I heard about that, I thought that was kind of an interesting thing to see in person. So let's see which chip we're dealing with here for that. So I found it. It is under what appears to be one of the flimsiest aluminum heat sinks I think I've ever seen, which I don't know if this will this explains why the system would overheat a lot, but this is a, this is kind of a junk heat sink for what they're doing here. I mean, it is, I can bend this heat sink literally just in my hand with my thumb like this. It is not, I mean, <laughs> it's a pretty bad heat sink in terms of the quality for what they have here. It looks like they even did, didn't even screw it in. I guess they kind of like tried to do a little bit of solder here. I was able to rip this up eventually. I just wanted to see what this was. But what's really interesting about this is this appears to be, once again, the same setup that is on the PlayStation 3, specifically the 60 gigabyte and the 20 gigabyte launch systems. This is the same chip. And then we also have the memory right next to it. Yep, it looks like they developed the chip that would go on that board in this system. And they also have the similar speaker right here as well. So once again, this really, to me, looks very much like a system that had a lot of development time that ended up kind of benefiting the launch PlayStation 3 overall. Looking over everything that's here though, I mean, I can understand why the system would overheat. I mean, there's a lot of things in the system they tried to pack in and then cool with this one little fan that of course would also run different speeds depending on the temperatures that were going on in the system based on different ships that needed it at the time. There's just a lot of stuff going on in here and I'm just surprised that they opted for just a single fan that's pretty small overall to cool what are, I mean, just a ton of chips that are responsible for different things going on at once. I mean, you have chips for whether it's networking, I, you have a Southbridge on here, you have chips that are dedicated to doing different forms of video out, compression, and also of course burning different discs as well. So just a lot of things they tried to pack in without a measure to really cool it. Anyway, that's gonna do it here for the PSX. I'll keep an eye out and you know what? I might even, if I do find it, I might even work to replace this heatsink inside just for fun. Uh, there is there is room, like there's quite a bit of room in here. And based on what they did with this dinky little heatsink, I, I think I can do better. I think anyone can do better than what they dropped in for that. Uh, especially since they used this chip in the PS3 and they cooled it a bit better in the PlayStation 3 for what they were doing. So I might look into that as well, but it also comes down to if I can even find a laser for this thing. But I hope you enjoyed this look at the PSX, an idea that didn't work with what they were trying to do here with the, this massive box, this do everything box, but eventually they used a lot of the ideas in the PlayStation 3 system that a lot of people did buy for five and $600 in 2006. Thanks guys for watching. Make sure you like the video on the way out if you enjoyed it, dislike it if not, and I'll see you next time.